Pensado's Place is brought to you by Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Avid, Isotope, Recording Connection, Studio 202, The Slate Companies, and Audio Technica. Storage, archiving, collaborating, and workflow solutions, all super critical to your process. We're going to do a deep dive today with some of the best. Pensado Capital Jam is absolutely rolling in D.C. Yep. We'll yep. update you there. Brand new ITL. Unleash the hounds, baby. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for dropping by today. We're gonna have a blast. Got some really cool info for you and mucho, mucho, mucho things to talk about, right, Herbero? You uh, ready for our trip back east? Man, Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. <laughs> it, it's, uh, everything is like, It's gonna be a good phew. one, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah. Shall we get to it? Let's do it. Hey everybody, great to be with you for our weekly conversation brought to you by our very cool partners, Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Audio Technica, Studio 202 DC, the Recording Connection, and Isotope. Thanks to all of you for supporting them. And for those of you contemplating schools, contact Karma at theblackbirdacademy.com. Do your own due diligence. She'll answer all your questions. Find out what makes that school special. International students, this means you as well. Please do that. Summer and fall classes are open now, and we want you to take advantage of that. Dave and I thank you for the likes and subscribes. That's what helps keep this show for free. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. I think we're somewhere around 120, 130,000, something like that. Incredible. Now, the Pensado Capital Jam, bumping? You better believe it's bumping. <laughs> Registration is still open. If you went there last weekend and it said it was closed, that was a technical glitch on their side. We got it fixed right away. It is wide open, so wide open, in fact. We moved to a beautiful new theater to accommodate all this demand. We've heard that folks are coming from Paris, London, Bangkok, Rome, Florence, and all over the US. When you get to the site, you'll see that we ask for where you're coming from, what school you're affiliated with, so do that. Speaking of schools, colleges and high schools, we wanna see you repping. Folks who do audio in any genre, in any field, we wanna see you repping. Your chance to mix with people and get all your questions answered, get some insights, help your career. We're gonna bring our friends in there so they'll be available to you and responsible to you. This is your great opportunity. Those sponsors that we talk about each week have all stepped up and we're gonna give away gear to lucky winners. We're gonna give away internships to lucky winners. We're gonna give away some recording studios, mobile recording studios to our lucky winners. In fact, the gentlemen that you meet today on our panel are stepping up big time to make sure that, that, that you can, we can complete that process for you. And then there's our panel. How about our panel? <laughs> Michael Brower, who did Coldplay, an absolute legend. Ann Mincielli, Alicia Keys' partner, runs Jungle Studios, works with Pharrell, Amazing. Hans Zimmer, Amazing. and a whole bunch more. How about DJ Ali on top of this super hot Kendrick Lamar record? A fabulous guy. Get it from the horse's mouth there. Kukarel, super vocal producer to Rihanna, Usher, Shakira, and more. And not just that, an, an also a, a, a composer and a producer, did single ladies and other kinds of stuff. Kuk is phenomenal. Gavin Lurston probably has one of the hottest mastering shops going right now. Grammy winner, Oscar winner, Golden Globe winner. Range of work goes from T-Bone Burnett, Miranda Lambert, the new movie Chappie, and way, way more. And I think Dave and I are working on a couple of other special things. Ladies, this is for you. Please attend. Your point of view is important to us. Yes. Your participation is important to us. If you've done a Pensado anything, you know we want you there. We think what you bring is different than what other people bring, so we want you there to get your perspective and get your insight. This is a chance for all of us to learn and mingle with some of the very best. Dave and I like to learn from the folks there. Of course, we'll be there, so here's what you do. Go to pensadosplace.tv forward slash capital jam for all the info. It's there, it's easy to sign up. We would say, based on the response, do it now. Don't you think that you're excited about it? Oh, I'm not only excited. I, I mean, I personally want to see you guys there, and I'll tell you why, I Herb, because mm -hmm. our audience, all of them lie about what they look like. So all their <laughs> pictures are useless. So if I can see you in person, it'll, 
It'll help me to put an, an accurate image together with, with your emails and your tweets and all the Facebook stuff you do for us. Because I know you're lying about your pictures. We, <laughs> none of, we, they can't look that good, Herb. They can. We've seen a few of them in person. It's so a very special audience. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some falsehoods going on there. Well, to your point, the one thing that you do get an opportunity to do is, is get a selfie with one of these folks on the panel who may be your hero. Get an autograph, do something, spend a couple minutes getting your questions Absolutely. answered. We like that personal interaction, so be there. Updates are on that site. Remember, pensadosplace.tv forward slash capital jam. Hey guys, Herb here. I know I'm looking a little crazy. I just came from getting my box on at the gym. But it was a really important message about Pensado Capital Jams. Dave and I wanted to get across to you. We're going to give away several Pensado Jump Starter Kits, and those kits are really mobile recording studios. Laptops, microphones, headphones, software, DAWs, the whole thing. We're going to give away several. Um, now, but we need you, our audience, who are the best in the world, to do this on the honor system. If you're already doing work, if you already have this type of gear, this is not for you. This is for the person who doesn't have anything. Could be their personal financial circumstance, could be something got stolen, could be all their gear is broken down, Maybe they've never had a shot. It's for that. Here's a simple way to do it. Write down info at pensadosplace.tv. Info at pensadosplace.tv. That email is only seen by one person, which is Will Thompson, our producer. It is very private. So your personal story will not go anyplace. Send us a paragraph, a quick one. Tell us a couple things. The circumstance on why you need it. The fact that you were really passionate about audio the fact that you'll stay disciplined and work at it and that you'll make us proud, tell it in your words, again, eight or ten lines, a paragraph, and we're going to use those entrants to pick the winners. Now, important, you got to be there to win, so it means you need to sign up as well too. But again, send us the paragraph, info at pensadosplace.tv, tell us about your circumstance, your passion, your discipline, and we'll take those selections and we will choose that day to give you things. Amazing opportunity, brought to you by obviously Dave and I, we're going to spend our own money doing this. Incredible sponsors like Avid and Isotope and Audio Technica and Software Guys and some in conjunction with Kukarel's Foundation. And as a little bonus, a little cherry on top, I'm going to get some of those guys on the panel to maybe give a critique of your, of your work. We'll work all that out and I'll announce this in the next couple of weeks. Pensado Jump Starter Kit. Now you have no excuse. Let's get you started in Pro Audio, baby. Bye. Thanks to Naris and P&E Wing, Studio oh, yes. 202 DC, the aforementioned G-Tech Gents, and all of our title sponsors for pitching in to make it happen. We can't do it without you. We love you for that. Absolutely. Finally, just as an update. We're so close to our new studio. Thank you for your patience. Cameras and switchers are in. We're figuring out a couple more solutions. We got a set of killer guests lined up, and we'll be back on our set in a couple weeks. Again, thanks for your patience. Can I do a quick shout out to friends of ours? Mm -hmm. So, Chongra and I went to see our friend Matt Marr in concert oh, um, last weekend. Matt was incredibly awesome. He actually has three top 10 records on iTunes. His new album is out. His manager, Cat Davis, treated us like champs. Um, he and our band, Brian Peterson, who's behind these cameras right now as we speak, turned me on to an act called Crowder. I met him, he wanted to meet us, everybody was very nice to us. I will tell you that of maybe the top 10 concerts I've seen, Crowder is right in that top 10. If you don't know who Crowder is, do yourself a favor and go see him and check out. This is a bad, bad boy. The mm. act was off the chart. So yeah. I'm a huge fan, thank you so much. Tip of the cap to Jay Desai, David Crowder, of course, Brian Peterson for all the hookups. Do you, please go see Crowder. Mm. Okay, Whew. you have a brand new ITL for us, don't you? I do, I do. Introduce that. Um, I'm excited about some new technology and, and I wanna share that with you guys today on this ITL. Roll it. Hey guys, uh, what I have in my hands is a better maker. Um, this, is a, uh, this is my favorite piece of gear, really cool piece of gear. Um, and I see it as the future of our profession, and that's a bold statement, let me tell you why. If, if you notice on the screen, you see the unit, right? And then I can control this unit from the screen. Now, 
the unit is, my rack unit is my favorite one. This is a brand new one, but my rack unit I love. So when I, when I, when I turn a knob here, or watch these buttons. See, see, I pressed them here, and they're coming on over in the unit. Back off for now. I can turn, I can turn these knobs, and, and they turn. Um, so if you watch this, see the knob, see, the, see it's moving over there. And I can close this, I can, I can set this up, set it the way I want it for my song, close up the session, open up the session, and it automatically loads my settings in the hardware unit. Now this unit is not a digital unit. It, the circuit that the sound goes through is all analog. In fact, it has two uniquely separate circuit boards. So the digital is going through one circuit, analog through another. I want to I want to I want to tell you another thing. The, the this unit, which is the newer unit, also has an MS feature, and it also has a feature where you can hook up multiple units inside your session, and it'll be it'll be smart and know which one's which. Let me hand this off. I was gonna hand this off to our lovely model Danielle, but I don't think you'll be able to see her. There you go. Um, so the technology is one thing, but it needs to sound good too. So I want to show you, uh, this is a Jill Scott song. It's on her greatest hits album that's about to come out. It's called I Adore You. Now here's the kick drum from that. Now I've got everything deselected here, so you're not going to hear this. You're just going to hear the kick drum itself. Yeah, I got that sounding decent with just a little pull tech. Now, um, as you notice, I'm, I'm using our old tried and true compression chain, getting a little boring, showing you these guys. It's adding a little bit. Now let's put the, let's bring the better maker in. Now the better maker has several sections. This is a, um, this, this is a parametric, this is a parametric different, you know, high and low frequencies high and low frequencies. And this is a classic Pultec type system. Now, let me start at zero with this. I've got it set on 60 cycles. Let's, let's cut some of the top end. Exaggerate it for you. 100 cycles. Amazing piece of equipment. Amazing piece of equipment, what you can do with this. Uh, now you can automate all these different things. Um, I had a little bit of stuff playing with here. Let me bring these in. Just the pull tech section alone is the price of it, uh, worth the price of admission. But you've also got this parametric sec section that's, that's really incredible also. Um, so many features, so many features. Go to Better Maker uh, on Google, check it out. Now, um, this unit um, is is a moderately priced unit. It's not it's not cheap, and it's not too expensive considering that a a pristine Pultec would cost you probably twice as much and you wouldn't get any of this section and you'd have to like document it and reset it every time you did a recall. This, shut down the session, open the session and it's back where you are. And it, and it sounds amazing. I, 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 I you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go out on a limb. I like it better than a real pull tech. Uh, they both have unique things about them so let's just be fair. But I, I find myself using this because it sounds better and then the, uh, the ease of use is, is is certainly a factor. Now, if you'll notice, Brian Peterson's going to show you um, uh, on my unit over here in the rack, right above it, all the way to the left, you see the, the letters 
better maker. Well, that's the pull tech section only of the big guy and you can control it from Pro Tools. Now there's no knobs on it, so it saves you a lot of money. Uh, you're gonna be shocked at, at, at how affordable this is. It's, it's, you're not gonna get a Pultec sound for this price. We're, we're, we're talking um, probably a little over a grand, way, way, way under two. And, you, and it does everything this unit does with the knobs. Now to the right of that is the same exact unit, except it's got knobs, so it's gonna be a little more. BP, if they can, no need to have a close up, but this is the actual Pultec unit. Uh, and, and you can control this with, with, uh, with the software. So, so if, you, if you buy both of these without knobs, you're gonna save a ton of money. If you buy both of these with knobs, it's still less money. So you got options. My buddy Marek, the owner of this company, we, we've, We've been friends for a while because he got in touch with me and, and, and I helped him with, I think, the first unit he ever made. So I, I've got a long history with this product. I know it from inside out. It's built like a Sherman tank, quality through and through and through. You can't get this kind of quality for this kind of price on anything else. I, I see this as the future. I, I use this and I wish I had all my gear that could just be recalled so easily and sound this good. So I wanted to share that with you. It's not so much a QVC commercial today is a challenge to other manufacturers to, to um, give us these same options. All right, let me know what you think. Hey guys, I want you to meet my buddies Mark and Mike from G-Tech. Hey guys, thanks for dropping by today. Of course. I know, hey Dave. I know uh, short notice and I know um, I'm going to drive you nuts with these questions, but thanks for following along and playing along. Jumping right in, um, where's all this hard drive thing going? Or, uh, like, like on Monday, are we going to have a 4,000 terabyte drive that's the size of a peanut? I mean, where is this thing going? I'm, I'm skin implants with molecular nanotechnology that I can store the Library of Congress on? Uh, and, and, and part B, because I have two guests. <laughs> I'm always cautious about moving up to like from from one terabyte to two or 500 gigs to one terabyte because I keep thinking well it's new technology and they cram so much crap in the same space it can't be reliable. Take it Mark. All right well so two things one in the world of spinning disk drives where we're at right now is our parent company HGST which was Originally, Hitachi Global Storage Technologies, which actually before that was the hard drive division for IBM, which is the company that first invented the hard drive. Right. Um, so that's kind of our history. Uh, we have a 10 terabyte drive shipping now. Um, now it's a specific, very specific type of drive. Um, the technology it uses. Um, it uses this extra stuff called shingled, shingled magnetic resonance, which allows you to sort of write the data closer together on the drive. Oh. Let me ask you a question real quick. Yep. Am, am I wrong in saying that all hard drives are basically a mechanism that, that has some kind of particle on a piece of mylar and a head that reads it? Is it, is it, not, mm -hmm. is it similar to tape in, in that sense? Well, it's, yeah, it's magnetic media. <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Yeah, metaphorically so speaking. So when you add more mm -hmm. storage, do you add more platters? I know uh, one time you read from the top, then we doubled it, and you could read from the top and mm -hmm. the bottom, and then... And then we just added more platters, is that what happened? It's actually a combination. You're both increasing the actual density of the data on the drive, mm -hmm. so you can write more and, and pick more up, and that's why they also get faster in many cases. But wouldn't, why wouldn't that, that density create problems because at 7,200 RPMs, mm -hmm. it's got to find it, but that's not the way it works? That's not the way it works. It's, so then it, why didn't they just invent like a 20 terabyte drive the first time they tried? <laughs> because technology is what, what allowed them to increase that aerial density. So it's the head probably is smaller or something like that? To be honest, that's, that's beyond just my knowledge. Just say yes, knowledge. nobody knows sure, anybody. yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Dumb question. Uh, but, that's but, fascinating. But it is, but that was, and we're now almost at the limit of that of the spinning disk technology in terms of where we can maximize. Aerial density is just about maxed out. 
We've done Let a me combination. Ask you a question. Of that. Mm -hmm. Is that your opinion or Bobby Lombardi's opinion? <laughs> at the limit. Would... That's actually uh, even beyond ours. That's I mean that's kind of engineers and and kind of current philosophy and mm -hmm. current current knowledge now. So would solid state drive technology be the solution to that limit? Down the road. Uh, it's still about five times the cost per gigabyte of spinning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and they but they are having success in getting s solid state packed smaller and smaller and smaller. SSDs don't spin. Correct, SSDs don't spin, but you still have to f have the chips that have all the data on them. Oh. And you have to fit. So, I mean, essentially, you have to have so many chips and oh, such a space. I misunderstood you. My, my bad. Yeah. So the the future of all of this is what? The future of all this, well, initially, right now, it, it's really a mixture, um, and especially right now. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is something like Sorry, Chango, I'm messing up your little display here. Is something like this the future? Um, can you hand that to me? Sure. Uh, where, where you've got a RAID situation. These, this is like my favorite RAID you guys make because it's mm -hmm. affordable. And, and look at it, it's a sexy little guy. <laughs> so, so is this the future where, where you can take the same technology but multiply it through the use of... Where's that big bad boy? Look at that. Right up here. Show, yeah. show him that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I love this thing, guys. Check this out. It's much heavier than it looks. <laughs> Open it up. Check this out. And how, how much storage does that hold? So this particular one currently is up to 24 terabytes. We actually have drives now that we could put into it to make it 32. Um, but it also, we have a big brother of this that has eight drives in it. So that's, now that's to, a RAID 5, right? This is a RAID 5. We have another unit. This is four drives. We have another unit that has eight drives. So it can be up to 64 terabytes. And, and for those of you that that uh, are a little bit like me, where I'm still a little mystified by RAID technology, the advantage of, of that particular unit as opposed mm -hmm. to having four separate, five separate drives by themselves is that you have redundancy. If one goes bad, there's another one that, that already, in other words, not only does it back things up, it backs itself up. Kind of, there are actually a bunch of advantages for RAID. The first is, yes, that redundancy or that, that safety net, because RAID, RAID's a, a lot of people don't understand what RAID is. What you're doing in RAID, it, it, it's an acronym. It stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, um, or in old, the olden days, Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. It basically takes means you're taking multiple drives and putting them together for a specific purpose, whether that is... I think is, I said that more eloquently earlier, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of cheap-ass drives. And a bunch, exactly, <laughs> cheap-ass drives. Okay. You're putting them together for a specific Mike, purpose. Man, we agreed that we would, Mr. Einstein, we'd, we'd bring them in to, like, for us normal folk, right? Help me, Mike. Go ahead. But the, uh, so you're either, initially, the, the most basic levels are either for protection or for performance. So that's not for store, not for not for redundancy and backup. Well, the protection. Okay, so that's okay. the so RAID one is the one where the drives mirror each other for protection for for backup. So what you write okay. to the one drive goes on to the other drive it's the okay. same way. So if one drive fails, you have it all in the second drive. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't you don't miss a beat. Okay, but you also don't increase the amount of storage you have. Correct. You actually okay. give up half of your storage because yeah. half of it's dedicated to that yeah. redundancy. The other basic is, is RAID 0, where you have both drives working together for performance. And it's like having two engines in your car. Or, or a better analogy is, to, is hiring multiple people to paint your house. Or even a better analogy would be the difference between a four-cylinder and an eight-cylinder car. Yeah, yeah. Right, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. Judges? There we go. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> and so the, with RAID 0, you get more performance. You get gotcha. two things doing the work of, of where in the past you'd have one, so it gets done twice as fast. Mm -hmm. and, and RAID 0 is what you're seeing a lot replacing SSD or as a, as a potential replacement for SSD because it's more affordable and it's, you're still getting the same amount of performance. So, so that one is what, around, around $100,000 or something? Uh, I actually think this one is uh, $200,000. <laughs> yeah. this, this, well, you touched it, so now it's worth <laughs> like $5. It's off the lot. It's used. Yeah. I, hey, you want to use RAID? I got a deal for you. They, they start around two thousand dollars for this particular unit. That's inexpensive. Yeah, and 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 then, and then this this little bed boy, give me an approximate price on this. Uh, that retails for six forty nine with two of the drives included. Okay, and you could get this at like Sweetwater places like that. Exactly. Okay. And the and the the nice thing about that is the individual drives that go into it are actually standalone, bus power drives mm -hmm. on their own. Now, now, obviously, a RAID setup requires uh, standalone software, correct? 
No, it's, it's actually usually, for this, it's, it's a software RAID you would set up in your operating system, whether you're on Mac or PC. So it would be included in the OS? It's included in the OS, uh-huh. Too cool. Yeah. It shows I'm behind the times. And then, and we actually, on the, on the Mac side, we actually have a little utility that gives you really fast access to the utility that's in the OS to make the RAID easier if you want to so do it. So I'm if right, there is the standalone software. No, well, it's, <laughs> no, you are not right. Yes, I am. I am right. If it's not on the OS right. and you have to add it, no, no, it's no. standalone it software. Actually, all it does is it basically gives you a quick link to the software in the OS, okay. so it's actually using the, so I'm right and you're wrong. This is, I, I, that, <laughs> I can't argue with that, but this is elegant. This is just, I mean, this is Steve Jobsian. I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment, but this is really well done. In terms of hard drive failures what are the common sources of failure let's let's break it down what are user common sources of failure there's i mean there are a couple of things in terms of external hard drives like like these guys and and mm -hmm. others that you see around in many cases it's it may not be the drive itself it may actually be the the components of the enclosure mm -hmm. so the power supply the the boards that interface the drive to the interfaces that you use to connect to the computer um, there's lots of sources. In terms of drives themselves, you can... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. The question was, what are the sources? Not if there's lots of them. What, uh, yeah. Like, what, what, what things that a user can do that will screw one up? Besides Dropping driving it, it over by yeah. a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee? Yeah, you can. Well, and then if you have a special drive, it, necess it, it, it may be a little more robust and not You did drive over that. one, right? I did drive, I drove over my unit that looks just like that, and the only way you can tell is because there's a couple scratches in the back. Would that be considered a user-induced problem? That would be considered a user-induced <laughs> yeah, problem. Yeah, I think you guys are being yeah. polite about user-induced yeah. problems. Yeah. Like, let's, let's think about who we're talking to about <laughs> user-induced problems, right? You have the late night, the late night spills some stuff onto your desk, and yeah. that might have an impact on your mm -hmm. drive. There's but not the, this one. N that, no, not, not that, that one. one. Not that is this one, water resistant or waterproof? Water resistant. Water resistant. We're currently we're saying uh, it's good in uh, a foot of water for thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. But you shower. We're, with we're yours. actually going. I do. Okay. I, I actually put soap on it and use that to rub the soap in. I got you. It's, uh, it's a good loofah. It is. This it is, is indeed. so cool. Um, but we're actually going for we're going for an IP67 rating. Um, we haven't achieved that yet. Which is a military grade. I'm trying to impress me. I don't know what that grade. is. <laughs> How do you open this damn thing? You got up oh, right on the other side, right here. Oh yeah, I remember. There you go, man. And that drive that you're holding in your hand actually pops into the dock that you that you dig. Yeah. Oh. Yep. It's it will go in there too. It will yep. go in there too. Will that one go in here? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah absolutely. So um, that was a blatant attempt to read my next question. <laughs> <laughs> so See, what did like? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, so there's nothing that the user can do to destroy your drives. <laughs> um, One thing they should know about, though, is hard drives are, uh, there are mechanisms in here that are spinning at, a, at, at or above the, the same speed as the red line of your car's engine. So that's really high speed. You wouldn't expect to park your car in your garage for a year and come back and turn it over and have it work. Similarly with drives, there are recommendations. Now they're not quite as sensitive as cars, mm -hmm. but with drives there are recommendations and, and the current recommendation as a manufacturer um, to maintain the health of the drive is to spin it up at least once every six months. You don't want to just put a drive on a shelf mm -hmm. and expect to come back 10 years later and be able to, sh to just plug it right in. A am I wrong? Are there, are there different qualities of drives that would allow not encouraged, but mm -hmm. would function over a longer period of time without booting them up. A lot of, I, I used to think a while back that a couple of manufacturers, they're all the same, but that's not true. There's grades mm -hmm. of drives and, and some drives are designed to, for heavier use and longer mm -hmm. periods of, of dormancy. Well, and that's where it, it actually goes, it's, the dormancy isn't really, because they all are all using the same, you know, they're all spinning mechanical products. But the mechanism so the latency, itself is not different? The mechanism itself, it, it's, it comes down to quality and it's more in terms of how you're gonna use the drive rather than how it's gonna sit on a shelf. Okay. So there's, there are desktop grade drives, that's what's in your typical 
off-the-shelf computer. Mm -hmm. That's what is in, in, as a matter of fact, that's what's in a typical drive that you go to a, a electronic store and buy. Yeah, mm -hmm. So if you're sending your assistant to Best Buy and they're grabbing off, you know, a $50 one terabyte drive, they're probably using a, a consumer, it, a desktop. They, drive. they are for 50 bucks. Yes, yes. Okay. absolutely. Um, versus an enterprise grade drive. That which was is, the word I was looking for, yeah, enterprise, yeah. Those are, and, and those are the drives, that's actually HGST, all that our, our parent company makes, HGST, are enterprise class drives. Yeah, so all, anything, all, they're all, everything we, everything in, our, in the three and a half inch size, the full size, these are two and a half, but in the three and a half inch, um, like what's in here, everything that we make is based on an enterprise class drive. It doesn't necessarily include an enterprise class drive, but wait a minute, wait a minute. That sounds like some voodoo stuff. It's more in terms is of is it or is it not a, an enterprise class drive? It, well, it goes into what I'm getting at is more in terms of design philosophy, where our competitors it, our competitors will start with a non enterprise class drive when they design a drive and try to get it up to enterprise oh, specs. Oh, okay. I, I versus we start by designing an enterprise class Makes drive sense. and detune it, so to speak. Oh, um, okay for other uses. Okay. So everything's based around that same platform. And the big difference is an enterprise class drive is rated for 24 seven use, where a, a standard desktop drive is rated at best for a 40 hour work week, it's usually unrated. Um, it also has, it's, it's much more reliable. It's cheaper. Uh, well, uh, an enterprise drive is much more reliable, not cheaper, but well, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the desktop upgrade drive is much cheaper because yeah. it's not gonna be as reliable, it won't have as long a warranty. But also, it's there. They usually will have maybe an eight hundred thousand hour. They, it's a reliability rating called mean time yeah. between failure. They'll have about an eight hundred thousand hour rating. The enterprise class drives that we use, this this one does have enterprise class drives in it. This has a two million hour uh, mean time between failure rating. So you, it's you a, buy that, Mike. Do I buy it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. We, yeah. I don't talk trust to the this guy's talk, shifty. I don't I trust talk, him. We talked to the data scientist about. It. I never thought that I would get nerdy about data, right? Mm -hmm. Like about two months ago, we had a meeting with the guys. What's wrong with being nerdy, man? No, I like being nerdy, but not yeah. nerdy about a hard drive, right? Like before. Duh. Well, before Help I started, here, it's, it's something yeah. that doesn't have any intrinsic yeah. value, right? Like it's yeah. an innate object that you buy, and you think yeah. like it's it's not valuable when you buy it because there's nothing on it, yeah. right? Like it's it's it's. I don't know, we, we, we like to joke around, it's like kind of like a car seat, right? You go and buy a car seat, there's nothing sitting in the car seat, it's just a thing that, that you know, eventually something's gonna go into, but that something that goes into it is your kid. And so you can go and buy the shittiest car seat around, am I allowed to say that? Mm -hmm. I've, okay. You just did. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you can go and you can buy the, the shittiest car seat around, but as soon as you put your baby in it, that thing becomes way more important, and you Absolutely. wouldn't want to do that. And so Absolutely. hard drives, it's, it's the same concept. Mm -hmm. And so with these, especially with the enterprise class and some of these big boys, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we got really nerdy with the scientists about it, and they showed us. Uh, going into our heretofore mentioned Best Buy, how do I know if I'm buying an enterprise drive? You, it's, it will usually be labeled. Um, I mean, it'll say on the front like, No, no, well, on, the, on all of our products that include enterprise class drives, we actually have right on the box, it says, includes enterprise class drives. In the case of HTST, there's a line, it's called the Ultrastar line. That is the, those are all enterprise class drives. And, and if the box didn't say anything, it's probably not enterprise. It is probably not enterprise. And yes. if, it's pro if it's 50 bucks for a terabyte, it's probably mm -hmm. also not yes, enterprise. Correct. Um, when you exercise a drive, you plug it in, and then, mm -hmm. and then should you select a couple of files, five files, 10 files? How, would, how do you exercise it? Really, you just need to spin it up. You need to plug it in, because when the computer oh, so reads you don't it, it'll, to, you, you don't, don't even need to, you can, I mean, you might open the folder and look at the files, but you don't mm -hmm. really need to. So the head's gonna move that. and exercise mm -hmm. itself just from just spinning, spinning it up. up. Yep. Oh, and you told me something earlier um, that all hard drives, if you tell your operating system to put them to sleep, mm -hmm. get put to sleep. Correct. Now, and, and, and obviously in Pro Tools, we don't allow that. So we, first thing we do is go in and, and, and take that preference. And, mm -hmm. But I, I, I didn't know that. So be aware that sometimes some of the problems you might be having on your DAW might be due to the fact that you didn't check that preference to turn, Correct. To turn that off. By default, most operating systems. Did you know that, Brian? I yeah, didn't know that. By default, most operating systems are actually have that enabled where it will put drives to sleep when yeah. possible to save power. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's really amazing. Um, I'm heavy, Brian Peterson and I are heavy into photography. He, he, he earns a living with it, I, I dabble with it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have a special line for photographers or all your work is adapted? You're, you're primarily 
think about audio and photography. Would and that video. be an exact and, and video, video as well? Video, yeah. exactly. And Brian does that too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and the core focus for everything that we're doing is really creative work, right? What's like, your What's your best photography piece that that seems to be popular for for video and photography? So the one that you had in your hand is actually really popular. The the oh, ATC, the, the thicker case, just oh. because it's mobile and it's rugged. Oh, this guy. Yep. Yeah, there he is. Um, Great for use in the field, of course, okay. because of all the protection offers the drive. I mean, it's funny that that one was designed for on set and sort yeah, of on I location that out, shooting. Man. Yeah. Fine, <laughs> no, I'm, take kidding, it. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Take it out. <laughs> that that one was designed for on set and on location stuff. And then mm. when I started showing it off to electronic music producers and DJs who were getting on the road all the time, oh, I flipped when I saw it. That, yeah, I mean, you the first time you saw it, I, I I I saw photography and video as being the first primary for that, and mm -hmm. then. It became obvious, like musicians who are on the road throw their stuff in a bag mm -hmm. and don't want to think about, did I just crack my hard drive? So And this right. this little guy is the same, right? It's actually the same one that goes inside there. That's but, his. That's why it uh, says C three PO on it. Yeah, that's that's my boot drive. Oh, but, this is the one with the porn. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> no comment. Um, it's audio porn, so he's got pictures of like uh, Commodore sixty fours and <laughs> a nice Neve console. Exactly. But the other thing is it's all we we des we design it as a solution. Uh, this is this whole idea with the GDoc that you love as well. It's a workflow solution. It allows you to quickly move data around because I can have this connected to my computer at home or connected even in my studio, um, and then pop these drives out and go use them individually. Put them in that for more protection. In my crotch. And in your crotch. Oh. Okay. No, in the in the in the ATC case, that's in your crotch. Safe there. It's so it's yes. It's like your family jewels. You know, it's all very important. All aside and all seriousness, um, I really like this. I, I, you guys mm -hmm. um, run to your retailer of choice. Well, first go to their website and check it out, and then then look and see who they who they work with and grab one of these. I I, I just can't imagine a future without something like this. You Absolutely. know, we're so mobile. Everything's mobile in our lives, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys stepped up and did this. If I can bring something else up, because no. there's one thing that in talking to a lot of, <laughs> I know, right? I'm just a pain in the ass. Uh, but there's something that I hear that, that I really kind of, in all my time talking to users, mm -hmm. that I think is, is misunderstood and, mm -hmm. and not emphasized enough, and that's the concept of backup. Because no matter what you do in terms mm -hmm. of, as Mike said, it's like this, it's actually what's on here that's the most important thing. That's a good, good metaphor. And, and and many people seem to think that that just by putting it on a drive, it's stored, it's safe, right? Well, whether it's an SSD, whether it's a spinning disk, whatever it is, stuff can happen to that. So to be truly backed up, there's what we call the three, two, one rule. Uh, you always want to have three copies of your data in two physical locations, and you only work from one. That and, and one of those physical locations, one of those copies could be the cloud, depending mm -hmm. on what you're working on. It may or may not like be feasible. Gobbler. Like Gobbler. You guys um, are pretty integrated with Gobbler, right? We are, absolutely. And uh, cool. And that's yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I support that wholeheartedly. I, I try to keep one or two at the studio, one at my house, mm -hmm. one at my assistant's house. We are an earthquake country, you know. You know. Right. And and getting back, your first question was actually about: Do I need to worry about with a bigger drive? Mm -hmm. Do I need to worry more? You don't need it. It's no more or less. There, there's no higher failure rate with a bigger drive. Okay. It's just the issue of backing up. It's, it, it gets that, back that to that concept. You understand why I asked it, right? Yeah. It just feels weird that something could be bigger mm -hmm. and still equally good. It just yeah, it I is it absolutely it it defies is. the laws of physics. <laughs> Get Lombardi on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, oh, I got you guys here. Thunderbolt it doesn't seem to be getting adopted quite as quickly as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. What's the future for Thunderbolt? Uh, it's it's actually still got a very it's got a very bright future. It's where I mean Apple has kind of gone whole hog into Thunderbolt. Yeah, but, but Apple's a very small player worldwide. Apple is, but it's also coming into PCs more and more. Um, Dell, Which was HP, my point. Lenovo, yeah, all have PCs coming to market now with Thunderbolt integrated. Okay, it's something that you and I were talking about, which is that with with. Musicians, especially, you're using that USB interface mm -hmm. for for your, or you, that that USB is your audio interface, or it's coming directly from some piece of audio hardware that you need. Whereas the Thunderbolt connections right now, there's not too much hardware on the audio side that's being utilized with Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. So you can actually free up your USB ports mm -hmm. for your music and actually rock the Thunderbolt. And it's it's I mean it's really fast. It's going to be pretty. Mm -hmm. you know, well, a PCIe slot runs at about a hundred bits per second. Uh, Thunderbolt's what about 80, but if you got a USB 3, 
and put it in a PCIe slot, you could pretty close get to Thunderbolt, right? And it's actually not quite. So Thunderbolt is very much like actually having an external PCI slot. That's the the technology is very similar. Uh -huh. uh, versus US, so USB three maxes out at about four hundred and eighty megabytes per second. Okay. Thunderbolt. The current, I said bits. I meant bytes. Yeah. The current generation of Thunderbolt is about four. Well, real world speed is maxes out about thirteen hundred and fifty megabytes per second. So it's about three times faster. Um, but that but it's also carrying video information as well. Uh -huh. That's why it's not the full 20 gigabyte, 20 gigabits per second that they claim. Okay. Because um, you can also carry 4K video on there on top of all that data. So that's why uh -huh. it, Thunderbolt is just dramatically faster, and uh -huh. it's just a, a really nice stable interface. Will so Thunderbolt for, ever be optical like the original mm -hmm. Envision for it? Will that be 3.0 or 4.0? That'll be, I think it's 4.0. It's the at least the the... Current copper cables will work for, uh, at the very least, the next generation. It may even be the next generation after that. I'm not positive. Is it cost that's keeping that from happening? There are optical cables on the market now. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a company, Corning, makes optical cables, and they're fantastic, especially if you have certain special, because they, can, they make them super long. Okay. They, they have up to 100-meter cables. Wow. You need, a, you need, like, a mortgage to get one? They're about 1000 bucks. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're certainly not cheap. But if you have a special application where you need to connect mm -hmm. something in another yeah, room, rare, in a machine room or whatever. And, and what do you see as the future? Like the new Apples have just one port mm -hmm. um, that, that does triple duty, quadruple duty. Is mm -hmm. that the future too? It seems kind of cool it's, that you don't have to buy all these cables and stuff. It does. And, and I you, mean... I'm, I'm, I'm apologize yeah. for interrupting you. I mean, for a minute, we're going to have to have a million adapters, but eventually right. it's going to be... Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that is... So the, the, what Apple is using there, that USB-C connector, is the new USB 3.1 standard. It's not, it, what Apple has on the new MacBook doesn't run at USB 3.1, the, mm -hmm. the, what the, the claim speeds. Mm -hmm. It's running at USB 3 performance, but mm -hmm. otherwise, that's where USB is going. Man, the, the 3 two, one rule, I'm glad you mentioned that, because um, at some point, every hard drive is going to fail. Like, what's your experience with that, Mike? I mean. Are we talking like, well, you got a three-year warranty, right? What's your warranty first on your hard drives? Yeah, so ours are three years covered. So, so you expect them to the it. last three years. At, at the very least. least. At the very least. I, I mean, my first, long before I worked for G-Tech, actually the first external hard drive I bought was the G-Tech drive. Uh -huh. I gave it away around six years after I bought it. Uh -huh. It was still working. I just didn't need it anymore because it was a 250 gig drive that was this big. Wow. Um, that's not to say that that's typical, but mm. that probably is fairly so. Well, recently, like about 20 seconds ago, you just dropped this. What, what, you said something. What did you say? Oh, well, the, well, this one is actually ruggedized. It's drop tested for a meter onto carpeted concrete. So it's, that's actually okay. not a problem. So, <laughs> Well, that's not, that's not ah, carpet. I got a little nervous, <laughs> didn't I? Ah. I'll, 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 I'll gladly do it with that one. <laughs> <laughs> he, hey, I'm not lying. He, he dropped this. He didn't even I flinch. Did. Oh, well, that's rugged. So you can get this one cheap too. When you come in to look at that, buy this too. Dollar mm -hmm. um, <laughs> ninety so, nine. And by the way, the other thing is, uh, just to add to the warranty conversation, mm -hmm. uh, when you go buy that fifty dollar terabyte drive at General Electronics store, it'll it'll have a one year warranty on it. Um, I mean, just just if like, any warranty. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and and the cost difference. If you think about what it's going to run you to go mm -hmm. to somebody like Drive Savers, who are I mean, they're yeah. awesome. They'll pull anything off of a drive if they can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're talking like a few thousand bucks to start, and yeah. goes up from there. You know, you know what's um, well, I was going to say what's interesting, but it, what's interesting to me is my generation has physical photographs. My daughter's generation has. Um, just a bunch of JPEGs. So mm -hmm. any failure along the way for her storage medium, and I'm toast mm -hmm. as a father. My pictures are gone forever. And is that something that you guys think about and address the fact that that our lives are stored somehow mm -hmm. in, in some kind of a physical device mm -hmm. and nobody's, well, not, not nobody, Gobbler's good at this, you guys are good at this. A lot of people are actually addressing this. Um, if we don't do something, our our past is not going to be documented. I Absolutely, mean, you can't go to the Smithsonian and, and and spin up a hard drive to look at pictures of the president. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you nailed it on the head. So there, there's a lot 
there, there's a lot of, of smart people working to solve that mm-hmm. problem. <clears throat> excuse me, external to mm-hmm. GTEC, right? So the BBC actually just launched a 15 year project to digitize all the sounds from their library because, and, and they dubbed it the Save Our Sounds project but, because of that exact But whatever reason. the medium is will be obsolete in 10 years. So they, yeah. they have to keep redoing that every 10 years. Is that the solution? Well, there's also, it's part of it. The, there's actually bigger issues, and especially in the recording industry, there's, there are much bigger issues. You have a drive full of a bunch of old Pro Tools 6 files and want to open Pro Tools 11, it's not an easy process to, to convert them over. and mm-hmm. You have to relink, I mean, may, may have to relink files mm-hmm. and all that as well. Mm-hmm. But likewise, even getting beyond that, it's not unique to hard drives, it's not unique to data. No. Because look at the old media, people have on their shelves old digital audio tapes that they may not have a, uh, a deck for anymore, or their deck may not be working anymore. Mm-hmm. So you've got to figure out how to convert all that data onto something that's usable. And it really becomes more about a strategy. It's, it's, that's what mm-hmm. people really start to need, need to be thinking about now, mm-hmm. whether it's your daughter with her pictures or um, probably more importantly. Well, nothing more important than my no, daughter. No, that's true. Nothing more, it's true. Nothing is more important than your daughter. Um, but you need to start thinking about how the, the, you're going to be able to read your files in the future. Okay. Whether it's a video file or a photo or, or an audio file, you need to be able to, uh, I want to say, as you go step by step, think about, can I really still access, kind of every few years, I would even say, go back to your, go back to your archives and, and look at them and say, can I still open these files? Is it, are, are any of these getting to a point where I might need to start thinking about converting them so that I'm future-proof? Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I mean, JPEG is probably not going to go away. So that's you're, you're probably okay in terms of photo. Oh, it'll go away. It'll go question, away yeah. eventually, but right now, so much is based on it's such a standard that it's less of a concern than say certain video formats or certain audio formats. Man, I got a, I got a, I think it's a jazz drive, probably a hundred meg jazz mm-hmm. scuzzy drive, and. Um, Glad to have you back. Was that flatulence related? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> and, and I'm having difficulty finding the information on it. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's one of my megapixel cameras, one mm-hmm. meg or half. It was right, right. pretty old. Yeah. And I'm dying to see what's on it. It might be nothing, might, but you know, that was just, well, quarter well, years yeah. ago. <laughs> exactly. But that's, an, I mean, I remember that's another example. It's, mm-hmm. do, you have a, do you have a jazz read? Well, for that matter, how would you connect it? Because mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember, I had a jazz, a, a jazz drive, and it was, I think it was SCSI, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was SCSI. Yeah, it was SCSI. Yeah, so, 100%. So you need to figure out how to get a SCSI mm-hmm. device connected to your computer these days. Yeah, I mean, yeah. or just a company that does it, that still, still has a couple. Mm-hmm. I always call my buddy Dylan, he's got everything. In terms of longevity for a drive, um, not not just GTEC, but just thinking about mm-hmm. drives that uh, I'm gonna give you some numbers and just go just say yes or no. Yep. Would you expect a hard drive to last 30 years? No. 20. Uh, no, maybe, but no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on it. That's that's probably a no. Yeah, it's probably no. I wouldn't it's probably bank on 15. It. It's still probably a no. <clears throat> 10. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Okay. Raise your hand when you hit the number. Nine, <laughs> the only one, eight, The only number you're going to get seven, to is three because that's our warranty. Six. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, like, like is, is, mm-hmm. it seems like I've had hard drives that last seven, eight years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that's not it, unusual. It's not unusual. We're talking, by the way, we're talking about exceptions, not the rule. Don't expect right. anything to last yeah. more than the warranty. But, but it's, it's, it's more than likely they're going to last five or six. And, Especially and a higher quality like, drive. Yeah. The higher the quality, the longer it's going to last. Mm-hmm. It's probably going to be a little unusual once you get past ten, and twenty is like. I, 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 well, nah. Well, I'm trying to think. Well, twenty years ago, uh, I don't have, it, I don't have anything that will speed it. I have, I have a zip a disk for my old MPC that, yeah, that we should try to find a zip. We should, we should find find a zip drive and plug it in because it's about twenty years old. Hmm. The point of all this is, you need a personal system. Mm-hmm. And a concept, and, and GTEC has taken a lot of the thinking out of it and, and done a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And uh, even if you don't buy GTEC stuff, which I, I recommend you do, there's a lot of smart people that have, have thought through this pretty carefully. 
and come up with a system to back your stuff up, have major redundancies, multiple redundancies. Um, if, if something bad can happen, there's a chance it will, and, 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 and you, you, you plan for the worst and, and expect the best. But uh, guys, listen, I learned so much today. Is there any thought you want to leave us with? Is there, is there something? I, 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 at the beginning of the show, um, I knew your enthusiasm would, would help our audience learn about the technology, and I, I love your passion about the product. <laughs> is, is there anything I missed in terms of a, a quality product you want to share with the audience or a concept? Mike, you've been a little quiet tonight. I know. I feel like I got yeah. overshadowed by the... By, I told you I was heightest. You know, the tall guy was overshadowing <laughs> me. I, I mean, for me, I think that the most important is that, that people feel okay about talking about this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not usually part of the creative process because like our drives look great it's mm -hmm. not the sexiest part of being creative it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those fundamental pieces that you don't like to think about until you have mm -hmm. to and mm -hmm. so what i would encourage i would say that the takeaway for me is think about it early think about it often because it oh, is yeah. the most is where your your mm -hmm. babies go and if you have yeah. questions about it you know you can always tweet at us and we'll respond yeah. to it oh, or that's cool. you know talk talk to people around you ask them what to do so if you, you tweet at gtech storage that's a big part of what we do is is trying to talk to the creative communities that we try to serve you know it's it's about us learning with you and also us trying to teach about how you can do this better so that you don't yeah. find yourself in a position where you know you've got you've got a, a hard drive that's failed and you've lost some really important things i mean that's the worst feeling in yeah. the world. It's gut wrenching. It's like being robbed. I mean, like it really is, isn't it? it it's it's horrible. So you, you talk with a passion that it's happened to you before. I yeah oh yeah I I yeah I lost a hard I lost a hard drive uh, in in college. I was a music business kid. I was a jazz composition and you know in college I felt like I was probably at my creative peak, uh, and I lost a hard drive my last year of school. And it was I actually vividly remember taking a sledgehammer to the drive when it was done because I couldn't save anything. I was so angry. I needed oh, you that. Know what? Uh, I was going to wrap this up, but give me one more second, guys. When when a hard drive does fail mm -hmm. quickly, what are the mechanisms to try and salvage something on it? Can you take the platter sometimes and put them in somewhere else? And that's what seven, eight grand. You're well, talking a lot true. of yeah, money. Like drive savers, you're talking thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they can in a clean room pull the platters out and and try and get the data, uh, try to get the data off of them. On a spinning That's an extreme. drive. On a, on a spinning, spinning drive. drive. Yeah, on a spinning drive. SSDs, when they fail, fail catastrophically. You can do nothing to get data off of an SSD but, that's failed. Explain to me why only a spinning drive can be saved. Because you actually can pull those platters apart, and it's, I mean, like you said, with tape, it's the data stored magnetically. So they can they can pull the platters out and, and essentially in that clean room, run them through heads and, and, and read the data off of them. Okay. Versus with an SSD, it's a bunch but, of chips. But what I'm confused about, is so you take the platter out of drive A, mm -hmm. and then you've got a, your own little special hyped up drive B, and you set the platter in there, and it can be read. Probably that's that's the realm okay. of drive savers. Wow! But there, but that is why they. That's why it is thousands of dollars. Yeah. Because that, that it equipment. is a very it's an equi equipment intensive and expertise intensive process. Pretend like you didn't hear that, because I want you to be scared. Don't 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 rely on that, because it's <laughs> well, not a hundred percent. Well, yeah, but but also just 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 think about that. One hundred dollar, one hundred fifty dollar drive to to recover the data from this drive that I could have just spent another hundred, one hundred fifty bucks to to have a second copy of. If I lose this, or I should say, if this if this get, if this well, fails, lose it or if fails. I, yeah, if I if, it, if I lose it, then I'm hosed. Mm -hmm. But if it fails and I want to send it to drive savers, I'm now talking about at least ten times the cost of the drive, if not more, oh, to get my me, data off me, of it. They, they, it was. Four or five grand exactly for an older drive. Exactly. So it could be 20, 30, 40 times the price. Well, man, listen, learned a lot. Don't mean to scare you. I don't want to leave you on a negative <laughs> it's a note. Fire and brimstone don't episode. Don't want to leave you on a negative yeah. note. Um, I don't think I'm jinxing, jinxing myself, but I've never had a G Tech drive fail yet. I've been using them for several years. Um, pray for me at home. I didn't jinx myself. Um, hey, Brian, is it okay to say that? In, in a sentence, pray for me. I don't think I jinx myself. Okay. Um, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Go to the website, um, cruise around there. There's, they've got a lot of products. I'm sure you'll find something you like. It's a product I use. It's a product I endorse. And I really thank you guys for coming on the show today. Thanks I had a blast. Dave, thanks, thanks man. Adios. Next time, guys. Mm -hmm.